afternoon. Welcome to my presentation of section 2.4 for trigonometry. We're going to be looking at the tangent and cotangent graphs today. So to begin with, what we want to look at is developing the graph of the tangent. All right, now first of all, we're going to go around the unit circle and we're going to look at, you know, these angles. We're going to look at 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. And then we're going to look at some negative angles going this way like this and work out using the definition. We're going to work out a table of values and then that will lead us to plotting this function. Okay. All right. One thing we know is the tangent of theta by definition is equal to y over x. So if we start with zero, we're going to have uh, 0 over 1, so that means the tangent of 0 radians is 0. <clears throat> we go to tangent of pi over 4, that means that we would have y over x would be equal to 1. Right, then we move to pi over 2 and something kind of funny happens here. We got y over x, we got 1 over 0. You cannot divide by 0, <coughs> excuse me, so that means you will be undefined, you have a vertical asymptote. 3 pi over 4, you have square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2 gives a value of negative 1. At pi, you have 0 over negative 1. That gives 0. <clears throat> now, if we go backwards through the negative angles, we're going to go clockwise. Negative pi over 4 would give the y value divided by the x value is going to give negative 1. Negative pi over 2, clockwise, a quarter way through the circle. Another bad thing happens. We get a undefined, okay? You can't divide by 0, so you have another asymptote. And then negative 3 pi over 4 goes this way. You would have y over x. That would give a positive 1 again. And finally, if you go halfway around the circle clockwise, you'll be at the point negative 1, 0, which would be back to 0. So one of the things you're going to find with a uh, tangent is uh, the key points are going to kind of go like this. You have an asymptote, negative 1, 0, 1, and another asymptote. Right there is a period of that tangent right there. Just think of it as asymptotes define the period right there. Now what you're going to notice on this is the period is a little bit different than it is for the sine and cosine and secant and cosecant. Turns out that that period is going to be pi, okay? I think I highlighted that a little bit wrong, so we're, we're going to be from there to there as one period like that. All right, so the distance between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is pi units, so that means the period is now pi. All right, now let's go down and just fill out and make a couple of observations. The period is pi, that's different. The function is undefined. Where is it undefined? Well, let's go through the unit circle and kind of take a look at that. Uh, we're undefined at pi over 2. We're undefined at 3 pi over 2. And then if we went backwards, it would be negative pi over 2 and negative 3 pi over 2 if we did negative angles. So that means you're undefined at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. You can predict that the next place it would be undefined would be 5 pi over 2 then negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and so forth. And there's going to be an infinite number of places where the tangent is undefined. Those are going to be the asymptotes. So every time you go through 180 degrees or pi radians, you cycle through all of the possible values of the tangent. Okay, now we're going to go next, and we're going to construct a graph on this. So I'm going to go ahead and just refill out this table of values and put these values in. So we found that we had, we were undefined at those two places. Halfway in the middle of the asymptotes, you have a y value of 0, to the right 1, to the left negative 1, like that. And then if you went through the rest of these points, you'd have 0 at those two places, and you would have 1 and negative 1 right there. So again, a period is going to be right in here, two asymptotes, three key points in the middle. So you do have five key points. All right, so let's go ahead and let's build our graph and take a few minutes to get everything labeled. Uh, we're going to go by pi or 4, and I'll explain why that is in just a minute. So let's go ahead and get this put together. 
Okay, be sure you always label your x-axis. That's important. If you don't label it, you're not doing math, you're doing art, is what I always say. All right, and let's go up to, let's say, like about 5, and down to about negative 5, and then that'll give us a good overall picture of how this graph goes. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and begin to get these points put together now. So one of the things that you're going to have on this is you're going to have vertical asymptotes. So you want to draw your first, first vertical asymptote, pi over 2, and you want to do your second vertical asymptote at negative pi over 2 like that. Now let's put the points. We have a point zero, 0, pi over 4, 1, negative pi over 4, negative 1. And then the graph goes through these points kind of like this. All right, kind of like a, the disco dancer John Travolta. Okay, if you don't know who John Travolta is, look it up and Google it. He was a famous, uh, he's a famous actor who get, became famous from Saturday Night Fever. And he, that was sort of his pose. So I think of a tangent way when I think of John Travolta. All right, moving on. We got this point, we got this point, and then it goes like that. It approaches the asymptotes. And we have a point like this and a point like that. All right, now I'm going to load up my graphing calculator. I do want to just basically show you something on this as to, as to what's happening on this. So if I was to go through and do this, the way I do a tangent, if I did a tangent of uh, pi over 2 and put that in my calculator, of course, that's, it's going to get, um, it should have given an error. I think I'm in the wrong mode. So let's go to radian mode. Always pay attention to the mode you're in. All right, so what I wanted to show you is we have tangent of pi over 2, and that'll give an undefined place. All right now, um, and so you have an asymptote. So if you do pi over 2, notice that you have about 1.57. So if we were going to go barely to the right of that, and if we were going to do uh, the tangent, and let's go ahead and just construct a graph so you can see this. So let's put in tangent x. Uh, like this, and for the window, let's set up what we have here. We have negative 2 pi, like that, and then we're going to go down to 2 pi. No, 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 no I want to go negative pi, so let's go negative pi, okay, like that, and let's go to pi, and do a scale of pi over 4, like a graph is, and let's go maybe like negative 5 to 5, like we have here, and type in a graph and you'll see roughly what we just drew there. Now what I wanted to show you is if we look just a little bit to the right of pi over 2, look what happens. So if I was to trace uh, at uh, 1.58, that's just a tad bit bigger than pi over 2, notice that you get on that when you put that in, you're going to get a, a specific y value on that like that. So again, if I was to go through and put in, notice that pi over 2 is about 1.57. So if I was to go through on this graph, and I'll do that one more time, I'm going to trace at, let's just do like pi over 2 plus just a little bit bigger, like add on like 0 0.001. And what you're going to end up getting on that is you get a, 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 a number that's very small negative, okay? And that does show with what's happening on this graph because you're looking at this going way down like this, okay? So that's what's happening there is that function is getting smaller and smaller the closer you get to that asymptote. Then if I traced again and did pi over 2 and I subtracted a number real close to 0, then notice I get a real big number. So that's saying that the closer you get to that asymptote on the left, the higher up that y value goes. So that's how the asymptotes work. All right, now the asymptotes all occur basically at these points. So let's write down, we have pi over 2. We have 3 pi over 2. You can predict that the next place is going to be 5 pi over 2, and it'll go on forever. And then you have negative pi over 2 as an asymptote, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, and forever, like that. Okay, now we're searching for a way to write this equation. Notice that they all have a pi over 2 in it, 
But these things are all odd integers. Okay, you have one, three, five, seven, and so forth, and you always have a pi over two in there. So what you would say is, in general, you would say x is equal to pi over two with a k in front, and you would have to say that k is an odd integer. Okay, so that would be the general formula for that. All right, the tangent does not have a maximum value. You can tell by looking at it, and it does not have a minimum value. And what that means is we do not have an amplitude as a result. Okay, you got to have an amplitude. Amplitude formula is one half the maximum value minus the minimum value. Since we don't have maxes or mins, we do not have an amplitude. Okay, moving down below here. <clears throat> now, if we're looking at kind of a general tangent wave with transformations, then this is how everything works on this. Basically, A is a stretch shrink thing. So basically what's happening is you're multiplying y values <clears throat> by A. It's not an amplitude, but it's a stretch shrink. So if you put a number in front of the tangent, these y values in this table of values up here get multiplied by that value. So it causes the graphic to stretch or shrink. The period is a different formula. It's pi over b this time. It's not 2 pi over b. It's pi over b. b is going to cause the period to change. And then we do have c causing a phase shift. x minus c phase shifts to the right. x plus c phase shifts to the left like we've learned. And then d is a up transformation or it's a down transformation. Okay. When you're finding a equation of an asymptote, one of the things that you can just kind of think about is the tangent is defined by its asymptotes. One period is defined by its asymptotes. So you'll always have a series of asymptotes. Halfway in the middle, you'll kind of have this thing that we call a inflection point sometimes. And um, what you end up having on this is if you write this equation, what you say is you say x equals, and you just really pick a vertical asymptote. So usually just pick an asymptote if it's positive or zero. And then what you do is you add on whatever the period is times k. And the reason for that is because the period, if you add the period, you get to the next asymptote. So you add the period times k, and then k will always be an integer if you want to use this formula to generate an asymptote. Okay, now let's move on and we're gonna do some that have now got some transformations and things in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin to look at this example. And I'm just, before I do much of any work on this one, what I wanna do is just mention a couple of things. In this particular problem, what would be happening is, this would be what we call a vertical stretch. It's not an amplitude. It's a vertical stretch, and what it's doing is, again, it's multiplying your y values by 2. And since it's multiplying them by 2, the y values get bigger, so it causes the, the, the graph to stretch. So instead of looking like that, it might be a little bit more elongated and stretched out vertically like that. Okay, the period is going to come from that number, so you're going to end up having... Um, pi over 2 is going to be the period. <clears throat> okay, this is going to take you up 3 units. And then when you do the phase shift, you have to put this in a factored form. So when you write this in a factored form, you're going to write this like this. And you have to put it in the factored form to figure out the phase shift. So that's y equals 2 times the tangent. Factor out the 2, and then you'd be left with x minus and then that would be pi over 8 plus 3. And let me explain how you get that. You basically just take the pi over 4 and divide that by 2. So you're just always taking that divided by that. And that's really pi over 4 times 1 half. So that's pi over 8. So that means that you would end up having a phase shift on this, which would be to the right pi over 8 units like that. Okay, so that's all the pieces of that tangent. We're going to have several transformations when we put this together. Okay, so I'm going to slide down to the next page, and we're going to go ahead and work on graphing this for a few minutes. 
Okay, so the factored form, we, we did that, so let's go ahead and just rewrite the, the factored form, which is y equals 2 tangent bracket 2 times x minus pi over 8, and we've identified all the transformations like that. All right, the period is pi over b is the general formula, so that's pi over 2. All right, so that comes from that value right there. Okay, now what we're going to do, and this is real important, is you want to find the x value of an asymptote. And what you do is you set the argument equal to pi over 2. The reason you do that is because of this. And, and this is not something that you just blindly memorize. You have to understand it. That when you're at pi over 2 on a unit circle, the tangent is undefined because it's y over x. Okay, so you would do that. The other place on a unit circle where the tangent's undefined is at 3 pi over 2 because you have a point 0, negative 1, and again, that's undefined. So what we do is we take the argument, and you can either use the factored form or the unfactored form. This thing right here that I am highlighting is called the argument. That is the expression for the angle, where x is the angle, and you have a phase shift and period change affecting that. So what you're going to do is you're going to solve a real simple equation. I like to take the non-factored form of this. So I'm just going to take 2x minus pi over 4, and I'm going to set that equal to pi over 2 because that's a place where you're undefined. And then once you solve this for x, you will have an x value of a vertical asymptote. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I like if I have an equation that's got fractions in it, I like to get rid of those fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 4 uh, to take care of that then. Then when I do this, I'm going to have... Uh, 8x minus 4 pi over 4. The 4s cancel out to give you pi. And on this side, that will just give 2 pi, like that. We can add, eight to, uh, add pi to both sides, so you would get 8x equals 3 pi. And then if you divide both sides by 8, you would get x equals 3 pi over 8. Okay, so that would be your very first vertical asymptote. Okay, so solve that equation and just uh, notice that the phase shift and the um, vertical asymptote both have denominators of 8, so that'll kind of make the graph a little bit easier to do. Now, the next step is going to be find the next asymptote. Okay, so what we have so far is we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 pi over 8. Let's find another one. Okay, so there's two ways to do this. One way to do this is take the asymptote that we already have and just add the period to it. The period is pi over 2, so if we add that, that should give us the next asymptote. So I'm going to introduce a common denominator, and when I do that, I will end up having 3 pi over 8 plus 4 pi over 8, so that will be 7 pi over 8. Okay, So that means we have another vertical asymptote, at x equals 7 pi over 8. And notice if you count 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 key points, and the asymptotes are going to define that period. Okay, the other way you can do this too, is if you want to, is you can set the argument equal to 3 pi over 2 because that's another place where the tangent's undefined, and if you take the time to solve that equation, you're going to get the second asymptote. Okay, now we're going to figure this increment out, like we've been doing, so the increment of the x-axis. You want to take the period, which is pi over 2, and you want to divide that by 4, so you get pi over 2 times 1 fourth, so that means pi over 8 is how you want to increment your x-axis. So what I'm going to go ahead and do on this now is, is when we make a table of values, what we're going to do is we're only going to look at this part right here. We're not going to look at you know, the vertical stretch and the up transformation. And this is the way I always teach students to approach these problems, is work with phase shifts and period changes. Those are things that are affecting the x values. Um, do that first. So let's go ahead and make a table of values. Let's start with 0 and let's count by pi over 8. So you have pi over 8, 
2 pi over 8, which is really e pi over 4. Then you have 3 pi over 8. 4 pi over 8 is really pi over 2. Then 5 pi over 8. Let's keep going. 6 pi over 8 is really 3 pi over 4. And then 7 pi over 8. So let's take this out all the way to the next asymptote. That's the reason that I want to go ahead and have you do that. Okay. So here's kind of what basically happens on this now. And the idea is we just figured out that we had a vertical asymptote here and another one there. Now what will always happen on your five key points, one, two, three, four, five, is if you're not talking about vertical stretches and up-down Y transformations, then halfway between the asymptotes, you're going to have a Y value of zero. To the right of that, you're going to have one. To the left of that, you're going to have negative one. If you refer back to the original graph, and I'm going to slide my recording up there just a second to remind you of this, see, notice that you had two asymptotes, and then you had zero, one, negative one, like that. Now that's a fundamental thing that you're going to have on tangents, and then we're going to end up transforming those. Okay. So now if we just kind of go backwards on this and work backwards through the cycle, you'd have 1, 0, negative 1. And then if you went backwards even to negative pi over 8, you'd be ready for an asymptote. Okay. All right. So we're going to just graph this in one stage. But what we're going to do next here is we're going to add in the transformations that we have now. So let me go ahead and write that down, and let's do the transformations now. Okay. So what we're ultimately graphing is y equals 2 tangent of 2 times x minus pi over 8, and then plus 3. So now we're ready to figure in this vertical stretch, and we're ready to figure in this up 3 transformation. So let's just do a table of values for all of these values. That way, that way we'll be doing this through two periods. And let's take this out a little further. So let's say negative pi over 8, 0, pi over 8, pi over 4, and just keep counting these out so we can cycle through two periods. So we got pi over 2, 5 pi over 8, uh, 3 pi over 4, and let's close this off at 7 pi over 8 like that. Okay, now, if you take these values, of course, the asymptotes are going to be the same. Okay, asymptotes are not affected by Y transformation. So that's going to still be undefined. That's undef whoops, that one's undefined, and that one's undefined like that. So we've got the, the uh, asymptotes set. Now we need to just do all the transformations uh, that are working on the Y values, basically. So here's what you do. Okay, if you were to start like at, let's start at 5 pi over 8, okay, like this value right here. We just take this number, 2, times the y value 0, then we tack on the plus 3. So that point now goes to 3. Okay, so that one is now transformed. Okay, take this one. That y value is 1, so do 2 times 1 plus 3. That is now 5. That point is now transformed. This one you're going to do 2 times negative 1 plus 3, so that's 1. And you can see by these values that you've, you're moving up and you're stretching. The distance between those numbers is now 2 instead of 1. So the distance between negative 1, 0, and 1 is all 1. They're all 1 apart. Now they're all 2 apart. Okay. Now just do the rest. Just kind of fill in the rest. That's going to be 1, 3, 5. And then now we're ready to graph on the next page. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a little screenshot of this and I'm, so we can move this to the, the next page and that'll make the, the graphing that I want to do a little bit uh, easier then. Okay. All right. I am so high tech with this stuff. Okay. So let me get this uh, OneNote back on here, please. Come on, computer. Okay. It's paying me back for saying I'm high tech. All right. I'm going to come over here and paste this. And then what we'll do is we'll do a, a graph of this now. So let's go ahead and get our graph set up. And let's uh, just kind of go like this. We'll carry this out a little further. So let's just say this. Let's start at negative pi over 8. And then go ahead and let's take this out so that we're going through two cycles. 
So go ahead and take a few minutes to get this put together. Okay, so that will get us through the end of that. I'm just going to extend that a little bit there. And let's make the Y values go up a little higher than 5. We probably need to make this go up to 10 or something like that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 like that. Okay, all right, now we're going to go ahead and plot our points, and then we'll have it done, and then I'll also show you a way to kind of to check maybe a couple of answers on this then. All right, so step one, let's just get the asymptotes done. We had asymptotes here, here, and here. So let's go ahead and just pencil in the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so you have one at 3 pi over 8, and you have another one at 7 pi over 8. Okay, now let's get the points. So we have a point zero one. We have a point pi over eight three. We have a point pi over four five. And then you can sketch the graph. That's really an, a real accurate graph right there. So the rest of it's just sketched in. And let's move on. Pi over two, we had one. Up oh, right there. And then, then we went up to what, three? and then up to five, and then you can sketch that in. So you have a graph, a nice graph through two cycles like that. Okay, one thing I do want to mention on this too is every graph you do can be checked. So pick a value, and it doesn't really matter what we pick. Let's pick like, if we go back to the graph, this graph again is we're working on y equals two tangent of two, times x minus pi over 8, or no, was it a plus? can't remember which it was. It was a yeah, minus pi over 8 plus 3. That's right. Okay, so if we want to check and see if we're right, uh, you know, keep it simple. Gosh, I mean, you know, plug this number in. If you plug pi over 8 in, it sure does make the math easy. So what I'm going to do is plug pi over 8 in for x, and I'm going to see if I get the correct y value, the y value being 3. So let's just do this to kind of verify that one point on the graph is correct. So we're going to do y equals 2 tangent of 2 times pi over 8 minus pi over 8 and plus 3. Okay, so that's obviously going to give you y equals 2 tangent of 0. That whole thing becomes 0. That's why I picked the point. We have that. Well, on a, on a unit circle, zero radians, you're at the point one zero. So the tangent's y over x, so it's zero. So notice you get two times zero plus three, you get three, that checks and verifies that point. So you can take all of these points if you want to and check them and, and verify them through one period, and then you're gonna know you're right. And I don't know why a student wouldn't do that unless you're just real confident that you know what you're doing. So these things are checkable. Okay, uh, let's move down, and now we're going to work on the cotangent graph. And with the cotangent graph, we're going to do a, a similar thing. We're going to look at the unit circle, and we're going to look at these particular values. Now, what I'm going to do on this is I'm not going to go out that far, so we can just forget about those extremes, and let's just focus on these points, and then that'll take us through a couple of cycles. So we're going to look at zero radians, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi. And then we're going to look at the negative angles as well. So what we're going to end up doing on this is, of course, we've learned that the, the cotangent is x over y. So at 0, you would have 1 over 0, which means you're undefined. So at 0 radians, the cotangent's undefined. If you go to pi over 4, x over y is going to be 1. If you go to pi over 2, x over y is going to be 0 over 1, so that's 0. If you go to 3 pi over 4, x over y is going to be this divided by that, so that's negative 1. And if you go to pi, 
x over y is going to be negative 1 over 0, so you're going to be having an asymptote. So if you look at that, that seems to define a period, and then if you went backwards through this cycle, uh, if you do negative angles now, you would have negative pi over 4 would be negative 1, negative pi over 2, you would have x over y would be 0, negative 3 pi over 4 is going to be positive 1, and then finally negative pi is going to be undefined. So you're going to notice that these are your key points. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 key points. You have an asymptote, y value of 1. We call this an inflection point, y value of 0, and negative 1 like that. So those are going to be your key points on your tangent wave. And again, it's going to have a period, just like the tangent did, of uh, pi units. So you can think of this part of the table right here defining that period. Okay, so let's uh, fill in a couple of basic observations and then we'll go to the next page and do our graph. Okay, so the period is pi units, okay, and we're undefined. If you look at all the places you're undefined in this table, you're undefined at zero, pi, and negative pi. So let's write those down. And then you can kind of see a pattern. I mean, if you predict on this, hey, the period's pi. So another pi, pi plus pi is two pi, three pi, so forth like that, negative 2 pi, on and on forever like that. So those are all the places the cotangent's undefined. Okay, let's go ahead and on this next page, let's do a graph. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get our get our x, x axis put together. So we got pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi like that. Now remember one of the things we've been doing always on all these trig functions is our increment, we've always been doing the period and dividing that by four. The period of the cotangent's pi, so pi over four, notices our increment. Okay, that's why we're doing that differently on a tangent and cotangent. And we go ahead and get the negative x values represented. Okay, like this. And let's go up maybe to say five on the y-axis, like that, and let's fill in our values. Now I'm just going to repeat like this. Here's what you remember. It's undefined at 0, pi, and negative pi, <clears throat> halfway in the middle, y values 0, to the left, y values 1, to the right, y values negative 1. Okay, it's actually a fairly easy pattern to remember, <coughs> excuse me, and if you don't remember it, well, what do you do? You go to your unit circle. The unit circle is the god of trigonometry, I always say. All right, let's fill out some observations on this, and let's go ahead and get our graph put together. So we got a asymptote. You want to sketch out a vertical asymptote at negative pi. The y-axis acts as a vertical asymptote. So you want to do that. And then you have another vertical asymptote at pi. And then just sketch in all of your points. So it looks like we have a point, um, there is the inflection point, and you want to get those points in. So the tangent, the cotangent has a similar shape to the tangent, kind of like John Travolta again, I guess it's a reverse John Travolta. And then you go this, this route and approach the asymptotes like that. So that's what a graph of a cotangent looks like, okay? All right, so uh, just a couple of observations. And then I want to look at this one on the graphing calculator. Uh, you're undefined at 0, pi, 2 pi, every pi. And then negative pi, negative 2 pi, every pi. So that means the equation of the asymptote would be x equals k pi, where k is an element of the integers. Okay, again, what you're looking at is just they all have a pi in it, but the coefficient of pi is an integer, like 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, and so forth like that. Okay, a couple other simple observations is it doesn't have a max, does not have a min, therefore we conclude that it does not have an amplitude. Okay, like that. All right, let me display this graphing calculator. And um, on the calculator, the way that you would put a cotangent in is you have to do this like this. You have to put in 
1 divided by the tangent of x, because that's the definition of the cotangent, is it's the reciprocal of the tangent. I think I've already got the same window in that we have for this problem. And then if I was to type graph, you'll see asymptotes coming out, and you'll see the same shape that we generated based on the unit circle. A couple of key things I want to show you is if you're barely to the right of zero, if you pick an x value that's just barely to the right of zero, the graph is going to get infinitely high. So if I traced at 0.1, notice that you're all the way up to 10. And if I keep closing in on that, if I go a little closer to zero, it just gets higher and higher. So, so the closer you get to the asymptote on the right, the higher it gets. And then you can do the same thing for the left if you did a very small negative number, notice that this is giving a very small negative y value. So that's getting uh, going down to a negative infinity and then going up to infinity like that. So you can use your calculator to kind of explore how the asymptotes work. Okay, a couple of uh, other observations that I want to finish up this lesson with a, a, a transformation. So here is basically what we're looking at. And basically, if you go through and look at everything, this value A, again, is a vertical stretch or shrink. Uh, the period is defined by that value of B. The formula is pi over B. And it's always a positive number. And the C is the phase shift, like we've learned. And the D is a vertical transformation. Okay, And then the way that the equation of the asymptotes go is exactly the same way it goes on a tangent because it has the same structure. So the, the idea with this is, is if you want to use this, think of, a, um, think of a cotangent as being defined, just like the tangent, by its vertical asymptotes. Halfway in the middle, you've got an inflection point, and then it's kind of doing the reverse John Travolta move like this. Okay, so we got that. And the idea is what you do is the vertical asymptote equation, you would say x equals, just pick a vertical asymptote. Either use either zero or a positive one. Then if you add the period times, and then k is an integer, then you will always get a valid equation of a vertical asymptote like that. So that's how that goes. Okay, so that's it. That's your cotangent graph. Let's go ahead and let's do one of these problems now that has a lot of transformations in it. So let's work on this just for a few minutes here and see how this goes for us now, okay? All righty, so um, let's go ahead on this cotangent. This one's gonna have a whole bunch of transformations in it. So we're gonna do a factored form. We are gonna factor out that three. So we're gonna say y equals negative one-half cotangent, and then we're going to factor out the three, so we have three times x minus pi over three minus two. And again, what you're always doing to figure out that pi over three thing is you just take this and you divide it by what you're trying to factor out, which is a three, okay? So let's kind of look at some of the things we have on here. One thing that we're gonna have is we are gonna have a reflection so one of our transformations is we are going to reflect <clears throat> over the x-axis. So we gotta consider that as a transformation. The one half, you're going to multiply all of your y values on a basic cotangent by a half. So what that's going to do is it's going to shrink the graph because if you multiply a, a y value by a half, it gets smaller, so you're gonna shrink vertically and that'll take care of that. And then you're gonna have a down two. So you're gonna go down two. And then you're going to phase shift to the right, pi over three. And then you're gonna have a period change. So the period is pi over b. So that means you'd have pi over three. So this problem right here has every transformation in it that we talked about. So the first thing that you want to do after you've done the period is to find a vertical asymptote. You do this by setting the argument equal to zero. Why do you do that? That's important. 
because on a unit circle at zero radians, x over y is undefined. That's y. So take the argument, and I like to just take the unfactored form. I think it's easier if you do it that way. I'm just going to take that argument, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. So the argument is 3x minus pi, set it to zero, solve this equation. So that's 3x equals pi. You add pi to both sides, divide by 3. So your first vertical asymptote is pi over 3. So that is asymptote number 1. So we got that. Okay, now find another asymptote. You got two ways to do this. The first way to do this is to take the asymptote we got and add the period. Okay, the period's pi over three. So we just say pi over three plus pi over three equals two pi over three. So that means our second vertical asymptote is at x equals pi over three. Now you can also do this this way is at pi, x over y, that should be a negative 1, 0, is also undefined. So you could also take the argument and you could set that equal to pi and notice you would get 3x equals pi plus pi, 3x equals uh, 2 pi. Okay, divide by 3, so you're going to get 2 pi over 3. Okay. So now we've established our two asymptotes, and that's really the key to doing this, so I'm going to correct that. That should be x equals 2 pi. Once you find your asymptotes, you are in business. Okay, So asymptote number two is x equals 2 pi over 3. All right, so we're ready to get it all put together then. Okay, all right. So the next thing we're going to do is what we've been always kind of doing on these problems is you want to find the increment. So when you find the increment, uh, you're going to take the period and you're going to divide that by 4. So the period is pi over 3 and we're going to divide that by 4. So that's pi over 3 times 1 fourth. So that is pi over 12 and that will give the period. Okay. All right, so we're going to count this out. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and when we make our table of values, let's just start at 0. And let's count by pi over 12. So we have pi over 12. We have 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6. We have 3 pi over 12, which is pi over 4. We have 4 pi over 12, which is pi over 3. And that's where an asymptote is, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. Then we just keep counting. We can go 5 pi over 3. Uh, I'm sorry, 5 pi over 12. We're counting by pi over 12s. So we can do that and just keep going. Let's take this out so that we have cycle this through two periods. So this is going to be 4 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12. Then you get to 6 pi over 12, which is pi over 2. Then you get to 7 pi over 12. Then 8 pi over 12, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. And then that'll give us where the second asymptote is then. Okay. All right, so we're all set up now to get uh, two periods of this. And just count it by, by fives. One, two, three, four, five. Go backwards. One, two, three, four, five. So that is your other vertical asymptote. All right, now what you do is we're going to really just graph this part right here. Okay, we're not going to consider the reflection, the vertical stretch, and the up-down stuff. We're just going to consider this. So the way that I remember this is I just do like this. Halfway between the asymptotes, you have 0. To the left of that, you have 1. To the right of that, you have negative 1. OK, like that. Oops, I put that in the wrong place. OK, so let me erase that. And then we'll be ready to put it all together. OK, now all I'm going to do is just graph the final thing on here. So again, halfway between these asymptotes, which is there, you have that, you have that, then you have that. Okay, so that would give you everything we need there. Now what we're going to do is, since we're graphing, again, we are graphing, um, we have a negative one-half and a minus two that we now have to fill in here. 
Okay, so let me write down at the side what we are graphing. We're graphing y equals <clears throat> negative one half cotangent of three times x minus, ah, come on, pay attention here, x minus pi over three And then we also, I think, had the transformation of minus 2, like this. Okay, so this is what we're graphing. Negative 1 half cotangent 3 times x minus pi over 3 minus 2. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and make a table of values for this, and then that way we just get the whole thing put together in one stage. So let's go ahead and just quickly kind of write out our x values and make a nice table of values out for this. And take this out a little further, like we did, so that we cycle through two periods instead of just one. Okay, now, the asymptotes we already found. The asymptotes were here, here, and here. Those are not going to be affected by these two numbers. Okay, so what we're going to do is just one at a time, real simple arithmetic. This is going to reflect, stretch, and then this is going to move down too. So just let's start here. Let's start with one. So we're going to take, to get this value, we're going to do negative one half times one minus two. That's going to be negative one half minus two. So that's negative 2.5. Move on to the next one. The next one's zero. So you're going to do negative one half times zero minus two. So that's zero minus two. So that is negative two. Okay, take the next one. That y value is negative one. So we're going to go negative one half times negative one minus two. That's one half minus two, which is negative 1.5. And by looking at those numbers, notice that they were, these numbers are one apart. Now these numbers are a half apart. So that's what that's how that works, okay? Now just fill in the rest. This is the same, negative 2.5, negative 2, negative 1.5. Now we're ready to graph this then. So I'm gonna do like a screenshot of this real quick so that we can refer to this like this. Uh, look at Mr. High Tech here, my goodness. All right, I'm gonna do this, go to the next page. And as soon as this loads back up here, then we'll um, go on and move on to the graph. Now, come on, get back to one note. There we go, okay. All right, so let me go ahead and paste this. And I'll move this over here so we can utilize this to construct our graph then. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and get the axis set up then. So we're just going to go out to the right, extend this out starting at zero, and let's just take this out like this then. So go ahead and take a few minutes to get that all labeled. Okay, so I think we're ready to, to get this all put together now. Put the graph, and then once we get this graph put together, I think we'll see how that goes. Look at Mr. High Tech again. My goodness. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start with our asymptotes. And we'll do those in red. So we had an asymptote at x equals 0, which, of course, is the y-axis. We had another asymptote at pi over 3. And then we had another asymptote at uh, 2 pi over 3. And this is going to take us through two cycles like that. Again, five key points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Let's plot the values. So pi over 12 would be negative 2.5. Pi over 6 is negative 2. Pi over 4, stop that. 
It's like that. Come on, stop that crap. Then pi over 4 is negative 1.5. So then we can sketch that in. So it approaches that vertical asymptote like that. Okay, then uh, 5 pi over 2, we're at negative 2.5, negative 2, like that. Sketch it in. And then hopefully what you can see on this is this looks a lot like a tangent because it reflected. So we did have a reflection. You should be able to see the down transformation on that pretty clearly and the, um, and the shrink. And that's it. Okay, so that's how you do that. The whole key when you're doing these problems with a tangent and cotangent is this. Set the argument equal to the correct thing. Okay, you want to find two asymptotes. So if you have a tangent, you're going to set that argument equal to pi over 2. Then you can set the argument equal to 3 pi over 2, and that will give you two asymptotes. On a cotangent, set the argument equal to 0. Set the argument equal to pi. Voila, you got two asymptotes. That's the whole key. Okay, And then you can do your other transformations. All right, so just to finish up, uh, just a few more things. Um, what I want to do on this now is um, get this put together. I think this one has a typo on it, it looks like. This is supposed to have like a X or something there. So when you're finding a period on a tangent or a cotangent, pi over B is the formula. So this one we're doing pi over 13 pi over 4. 13 pi over 4 is the coefficient of the variable x, so that's going to define the period. Okay, so we're just going to do pi divided by 13 pi over 4. So that's pi times the reciprocal. Pi's cross out, so that means the period is going to be equal to 4 over 13. Okay, a period doesn't have to have pi in it, because it's just a number, it's just a measurement. Then the next one is tangent 4t, we would say pi over b. This time b is the 4, so that period would just be pi over 4. Okay, and that's how that gets put together. All right, uh, let's see. The only other thing I wanted to look at is just maybe an example of a, of a shift. So this one we have y equals cotangent of x, and we're going to do these transformations. We're going to shift it to the left. We're going to reflect it over the x-axis, and we're going to translate it 5 upwards. So here's how you do this, basically. Okay, the 5 upwards is going to go outside of the cotangent. The phase shift is affecting x, and since we're going to the left, that means we're going to add pi over 2. And then the reflection is going to be a negative value that multiplies the y values by a negative 1. So the answer will be y equals negative cotangent of x plus pi over 2. And then up 5 is going to be plus 5 like that. So you can build trig functions. If you're given the transformations, it's a quite an easy thing to get everything put together then. Okay, so that should help you with the tangent and cotangent graphs. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll work a little bit in getting into chapter three next. Mm -hmm.